Eu sou a face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power. As thou wast sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of fire. And let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder their hands, the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together, and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name, and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. Be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thy unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that, have possess, that thou hast possessed from the beginning. Raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee, and let the prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessings of Aaron over thy people, that all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come before you, Lord. We want to ask you first for forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our forefathers. Dear Lord, we pray for all of Israel, for the leadership, dear Father, traveling across the country, across the world, dear Father, that you give them safe travels, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for the brothers and the sisters in the congregation, dear Father, that they're able to endure all hardships that's brought upon them, dear Lord, to continue to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for the sick among us, dear Lord. We pray for soldier Tariam. Dear Father, we pray for Sister Bela and her husband, dear Father, the death of, death of Brother Iman, dear Lord. We pray that you strengthen her, dear Father, that you encourage her, dear Lord. Allow her to be able to find rest, dear Father, peace, dear Father. Lord God, we pray for the brother, dear Father, that we may see him again, dear Father, if we all continue to endure and keep the law, statutes, and commandments, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for the, the food and the strong drink, and we pray for all IUIC, dear Father, all, all from the soldiers down to the officers all the way up to the to the bishops dear lord dear lord we pray all these things father in your son's name jesus christ the black messiah we pray amen men of israel sons of god patient saints sons of god and salute salute down Face sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, 
Oh, praise to the most high. Sisters, how are y'all doing this Sabbath day? I know y'all didn't get a break. Amaziah was supposed to end 30 minutes before I got here. So y'all didn't get a break due to his negligence. Brothers, how are y'all doing this Sabbath day? I know y'all were supposed to get a break, but once again, due to Captain Amaziah's negligence, not ending 30 minutes before class starts, y'all, y'all don't get a break. So we're going to open up with uh, our topic. Let's go and we're going to start it today. We're going to start with Revelation chapter 1. I know I didn't do 2 and 3 yet. We're starting at chapter 1. And the reason I'm starting with chapter 1 because 2 and 3 goes into the messages to the churches. So I need to preface it with chapter 1. I always tell you, I like to, I read, uh, after I read forwards, I read backwards. That way I can get my mind situated and settled. Uh, hey, Officer Alicia, uh, put the map up of Rome. Please, I want to see the map of Rome. Put that up on the screen. Yes, this is the Roman Empire. Can you all see that map? All right, okay. Y'all see the big patch of blue right there? That is the Mediterranean Sea. In the scriptures, that you'll read about it called the Great Sea. All right, the Great Sea. You can see at the bottom right you see the Red Sea, okay? Now, y'all see where it says Jerusalem. Hey, Alicia, can you uh, use your little, uh, I don't know what that thing is called, pointer, the cursor. See where it says Jerusalem? Yeah, okay, you see Jerusalem right there. See the little cursor. Now, show them where it says, where this Red Sea is. Red Sea, right below it, Alicia. Right below it. Yeah, very good, very good. Now, you see now. I want you see where it says Nabat Nabatia. I ain't got my. I can't see that far. Nabatia. All right. You see the area now, right there, Elisha. Elisha. You see Elisha. You see it says uh, Nabatia, right there. That's the Arabs took that over. This was centuries later. Centuries later. Um, so what I want y'all to see is that from the Great Sea. To the Red Sea is where Esau, where, right where it says Nabatea, that's where Esau built um, the Suez Canal. It connects the Great Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, to the Red Sea. There's a line that goes from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. It connects it. So that's the Suez Canal in the late 1800s. Now, so what we're going to talk about today, this part of the Roman Empire... Y'all can see where Italy is. See Rome, the capital right there? Uh, Alicia, do miss? Yeah, right there. See Rome. You can always, you learn in school, you know Rome, Italy by the boot symbol. Y'all see that? It looks like a boot with a high heel. Y'all see that? That's how you always know Rome, Italy, right there. Now, right across that part of the Great Sea, where it says Macedonia, uh, you see Thrace. Mm, What else do you see? I can't read that word. Uh, Actum. This is the area we're going to discuss today. Right there in the green, right where Alicia's circling, right there. We're going to discuss that from today in the next two chapters of Revelation. Deals with this whole area right there, that green section. All right. Give me Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Who's reading? I'm Sir Solomon. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, y'all see this part that says, which must, to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. Now, we look at that term, shortly come to pass, and... The way we're reading it is not in the same context as God sees things. I'm going to show you that. Give me the book of Hosea, I believe it is. Just popped in my mind. First, before you go there, give me 2 Peter 3 and 10. Let me show you. Um, What I'm showing you right now is things that must shortly come to pass. That's the part I want you to look at. So go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. It's 10 I want where it says, I don't. Brethren, we should not be ignorant concerning this one thing. It might be chap- verse 8. It might be verse, verse 8. Let me hear that. Verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, 
that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So that verse right there is very paramount to what we just read in Revelation. Christ says <coughs> things which must shortly come to pass. That's in God's time. That is not in our time. Okay? So Peter reveals a mystery here. He says one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Okay? So watch this. Go to Hosea chapter 6. I'm going to show you something about that thousand year period. What verse you want, Bishop? Uh, one. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. So the prophet Hosea says, come, let us return unto the Lord. Go ahead. For he hath torn. He hath torn. And he will heal us. And he will heal us. Meaning he put us in slavery and he's going to bring us out. Go ahead. He hath smitten. Mm -hmm. And he will bind us up. Same thing. Go ahead. After two days will he revive us. Now y'all see that right there? It says, after two days will he revive us. We'll look at that and go two days. That two days is 2,000 years. That's what it's talking about. It's literally saying, after 2,000 years will he revive us. What we see here right now, that's online right before us, this is us being revived. It says, and it's, notice the word after. After two days will he revive us. Go ahead. In so the, I, if two days has passed, what day is it? The third day. Two days have passed. We're in the third day. Watch. Read it again, verse 2. After two days will after, he revive us. I want you to look us. at the word after. Two, two days have passed. We're in the third day. Read it again. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. We're in that third day. We haven't been raised up yet, but we're being revived. So the reviving is us waking up to the truth. The raising us up is to the stature we are meant to be when we rule this world. That's what he's saying. That's what the prophet Hosea is saying. Go ahead. And we shall live in his sight. And we shall live in his sight. So he didn't tell us what part of the third day, though. We know we're in it because we're being revived. But he didn't say what part of this third day he's going to raise us. So we're just waiting. We're just waiting. Now, that's a heavy mystery right there. The average crew will read that and go two days. Remember, 2,000 years ago, what happened? Christ died on the cross. He, he uh, died and was resurrected and ascended up on high. So watch, let's go back to Revelation chapter 1. Now, I read, I read that. I prefaced it because of what we read in Revelation 1, verse 1. Read it again. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So things which must shortly come to pass. Now, you see it says to show unto his servants with an S. Give me that in Leviticus 25, 55, please. Because Christians all around the world think that they are the servants of God. Edomites, Moabites, Philistines, and Jebusites, and Ishmaelites, they all think they are servants of God. But watch what Moses revealed here. Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. The only servants of God are the children of Israel. There's no Arab servants. There's no Hamitic servants. There's no Edomite, Caucasian servants. It don't exist. There's no Chinese servants, no Japanese servants of the Lord. They are not the servants of the one true God. Let's go back to Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it. By his angel unto his servant John, uh -huh. who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, the word of God is, is still talking about Jesus Christ, who bear record of the word of God. That's Christ in fulfillment and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And of all the things that he saw, blessed is he that readeth. The Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he. Let me tell you real quick something about John. Let me tell, before I get there, I want to talk about the Apostle John, often called John the Revelator or John the Divine. Give me, uh, watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 
And we're going to start at verse 20. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 20. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, and a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father. The ship and their father. Go ahead. And followed him. And fo See, once you're called, you are called. Once Christ said, hey, follow me, they up and dropped everything. The Spirit said, this is him. The Spirit checked in them that this is him. Just like John the Baptist said. Remember he said, behold a Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. So a lot of people knew that. So when they got the call, they didn't if, and, or but. They didn't give no kind of excuses. John dropped everything and came and followed Christ. From there, give me John 20. John chapter 20, verse 1. John chapter 20 and verse 1. Bear with me. Hold on. Hold on. John chapter 20 and verse 1. Go ahead. The first day of the week come Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. And see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Stop right there. What you're going to notice in the book of John, John doesn't often refer to himself as John. He refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. The other apostles referred to him when they spoke about John. They would always reference him by saying, he that layeth on Christ's bosom. Meaning he always, sit back like this, suppose he's Christ and I'm John. He was always like this. Wherever Christ was, John had his head right there trying to listen and learn. That's what he was doing. Read that again. John chapter 20 and verse 1. The first day of the week come Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. And see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon P Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. Peter probably had a little belly on him, so John ran quicker than him. <laughs> Go ahead. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Now watch this. Look at John chapter 21. 21 and 20. John chapter 21 and verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, see if the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him Let say, me show you something real quick. It just popped in my mind before we read that. I want you to show, I want to show you why they always said that John loved, that John was the one Christ loved. Look at John 19. I just, my eyes just glanced over it, so I, I want us to read it. John chapter 19. And Y'all remember, Peter denied Christ when he was on the cross. Everybody deserted Christ, but watch this. John 19, 25. John chapter 19 and verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved. This is John. Go ahead. He said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. So Christ said to his mother to look at John, behold your son. He's going to take care of you now. You're going to look after him. Go ahead. Then saith he to the disciple, behold, thy mother. So he says that John was the only one there. Everybody else took off running. John stuck, stuck by Christ. So now he says to John, behold, your mother. Meaning my mother is now your mother. Go ahead. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. That's why the scriptures always made reference to John who Christ loved. John was unselfish. He jeopardized. His, I mean, they all loved Christ. Don't get me wrong. But John was on another level of love and admiration and dedication and loyalty. 
John was on another level. Let's go back to John 20. 21, I mean. John 21 and 20. John chapter 21 and verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, see if the disciple whom Jesus loved following. So Peter's walking with Christ. They having a personal conversation. Peter looks back. He sees John following. Look, what the hell is this? John is following them. Go ahead. Which also leaned on his breast at supper. Uh huh. And said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? So now Peter asks Christ, who's going to betray you? Thinking, looking at John back there. This guy always following Christ everywhere. Go ahead. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And what shall this man, meaning this guy that's following us, what shall he do? Meaning, he just asked the question about betrayal. Then he's going to ask specifically about John. What about this guy? Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to, to thee? Follow thou me. He said, if Christ's response to Peter was, if I will that he tarry, to tarry means to wait, till I come, meaning till I return, what is that to thee? Follow thou me, meaning you follow me, Peter. Don't worry about John. Go ahead, watch this. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that, that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So Peter had interpreted that as John is never going to die. John clears up and says, no, that's not what Christ said. Christ simply said, if I tarry, if I will him to tarry till I come, what is that to thee? He didn't say, I'm never going to die. Go ahead. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. So John is explaining now, he's because many times you'll read and ask, who's the disciple that Christ loved? It's telling you right here in verse 24. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things. Go ahead. And we know that his testimony is true. Mm -hmm. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Y'all hear that? So John said there's so many things Christ did. That's why I always tell you. The, the New Testament is simply an abbreviation. An abbreviation. The four gospel is an abbreviated uh, chronicle of the life of Christ. <laughs> it's, John said the world could not contain what Christ did. So now, back to what he said in verse 22. Read 22 again. Verse 22. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Now, Peter again interpreted that, that John would never die. John said, that's not what Christ said. Now, let's see what it really meant. Get Revelation 10, verse 11. Concerning John. We read this before. Revelation 10, verse 11. Here's the precept that under, to understand what he meant. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me. The me is John. Thou must prophesy again. Thou must prophesy again. Go ahead. Before many peoples. Before many peoples. And nations. And nations. And tongues. And tongues. And kings. And kings. Meaning John would be rejuvenated, regenerated, and come back right. in the last days. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. People think, about, oh, no, there's no such thing as regeneration. Yes, it is. You're insane. Because John, when you read about his life, he died on the island of Patmos. He didn't come again to do all of this back then. He will come again in the last days, in these last days. Now let's go back to Revelation, Revelation. chapter 1. You want verse 3? 2 again. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. I, I wanted to get to that right there. Blessed is he that readeth. Come on. And they that hear the words of this prophecy uh -huh. and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Now, verse 3, verse 3, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Now, we, we are blessed when we read the book of Revelation. But watch this. Isaiah 34, 16. This is one we often read. Blessed is he that readeth. 
Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. See that? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, which is the Bible as we call it today, and read. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. No one of these shall fail. Hold that right there. Get the precept in 1 Kings 8, 56. No one of these shall fail. What is he talking about? He's going to explain right here. Solomon explains in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord that have given rest unto his people Israel. Blessed be the Lord that have given rest unto his people Israel. Go ahead. According to all that he promised. Here it comes. There have not failed one word of all his good promise. They have not failed one word of all his good promises. Go ahead. Which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Um, now, let me, let me tell you about the good word of God that has not failed. Many times people often ask the question, how do you know the Bible is a true book? It's been published and republished and translated and retranslated over and over again. Simple. The way you know the Bible is true is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Did we go into slavery on ships? Yes, sir. You better believe that. There, that thing right there did not fail. Did we have yokes of iron on our necks? Yes, that thing, not one word of that thing failed. Were our sons and daughters taken from us and given to another people? Yes, that word did not fail. Did we become proverbs and byworks wherever we were scattered? Yes, that word didn't fail. Were we removed into all kingdoms and nations of the earth? Yes, that word surely did not fail. So we know the Bible is true based on that alone. Because we might, rem we might forget the promises because we're in the curses right now. So we're going to use them curses to our advantage and reveal that them curses only fit our people. And not one word that God said through Moses has failed. Let's go back to Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah chapter and if somebody can't see Deuteronomy 20, listen, leave them alone. Leave them alone. That, they got to be dumb as a rock. If you can't see that we went into slavery on ships historically, you're, you're, you're an idiot. I like ASAP. We're an idiot. If you can't see them, them curses came on us, you're a walking, talking idiot, and I'm wasting my time talking to you. Only way you can disprove the Bible is prove that slavery never happened to our people. That's the only way you can disprove the Bible. Give me that. Read that again, Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And read. Let me show you another one. Let me show you another one. Give me, I think it's Daniel chapter 9, I think. I'm guessing. I'm shooting from the hip. Where it said, I, Daniel, understood by books. I forgot where it is. I know it's in Daniel. Let me see. Hmm. No, it's not that. Yes, verse 2. Yes. Daniel 9, verse 1 and 2. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, where, whereof the, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. You see what Daniel said? He said, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. What, what books was he reading? The previous books of the previous prophets Daniel occupied himself studying. So he said, based upon the writings of Jeremiah, we're going to be in Babylon 70 years. And it was so, and it was true. And not one word failed. It was 70 years to the day. That, that captivity was, then Persia took over. So when you got the book in your hand or in your house and you don't occupy yourself with reading, you're a fool. This is why I tell, read at least four chapters a day, at least minimum. And that's a minimum, four chapters a day. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah 34, 16 once again. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Remember, the angel said to John, Christ said to John, blessed is he that readeth. <laughs> read. No one of these shall fail. No one of these prophecies shall fail. None shall want her mate. And you cannot mate the Bible with any book. I warn you brothers about the Quran. Let me tell you what happened. Was you with us? Oh, yeah, you was with us when that foolishness. Was that you that started that foolishness? There were, I forgot who it was. So I don't want to say it's you and it wasn't you. Where's your mic at? There's your mic right there. You, there's your mic. 
He's mumbling. What? Yeah, we was in Sierra Leone. You know, it's a Muslim country, right? Muslim. <coughs> we got a co you got Corona now. I got, got Corona in my, my throat. <laughs> picture. <laughs> yeah, um, we was going over Islam, you know, and brother brought out, uh, yo, but I believe in Islam, you know, yada yada. And I, like I've done for many a year. Oh, oh, oh. who was you? <laughs> who was you? You know, we bringing out, you know, the Quran is trash, you know, and we we actually had a Quran with us and showed them, you know. One of the surahs, it's about the children of Israel. We the blessed people that it's in the Quran. That's all that happened. <laughs> so after he got finished trashing the Quran, he reads out of the Quran that the children of Israel, right? Some about we, God's people. So then one of the Muslims goes, wait, you just said the Quran is garbage, yet you read something true that you say is true from the Quran. So which is it? Is the Quran garbage? Is it true? So then we were like this. Do, 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 do. I said, you see that? I said, you see that right there? We got hemmed up there. But we got, we tore, y'all see the video, we tore him up anyway. Read that again, read that again. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. We cannot mate the Bible with any other book of God. You can't do it. The Quran don't hold no water. Okay, it says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Not seek ye out of the Quran and read. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. That's the Bible. Go ahead. For my mouth it hath commanded. God's mouth commanded. Go ahead. And his spirit it hath gathered them. And God's spirit is the one that gathered. Because many times people say, well, how come only these books were gathered? God's spirit had it so for these last days. What we got, he said, hold fast till I come. Y'all remember that? He said that in Revelation 2. What you have, hold fast till I come. He has given us enough of what we need. So when you go out on your own, Negroes do this search, search it. I'm going to find another book. Because you ask people say, well, how come? Remember the Apocrypha. You may ask, what about the Apocrypha? That was in the original King James Version Bible. And not just that version, the versions that preceded it. You had the uh, Greek Septuagint. The Apocrypha was in it. You also had the Latin Vulgate. The Apocrypha was in that too. So now, and it's the same books. You got brothers and sisters that go... Well, I'm going to do my own research, and I'm going to go outside and find other books. What I want you to realize about King James, I'm going to start with him because people always throw his name out there. He gathered 47 of the top scholars who were, listen to the word I'm about to say, fluent in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. You Negroes today, I'm gonna, in case you don't know, you are, let me get a camera because not y'all are here. Some online. You number one, you're not a scholar, and you're not fluent in Greek, Hebrew, or Latin. So do yourselves and do everybody around you a favor. Put it down because they go. I did my research. The Book of Enoch and the Book of what's that other? The Book of Jasher. And in one of them, I forgot because I, I glanced through them little stupid books. One of them says Esau was forgiven. And God accepted him. I mean, you can't see that that contradicts the Bible? They can't see it because now they got all Edomites in their congregation. Half of them married to white women. What the hell is this? I Y'all know the congregation, who it is. Just think, think a second. You know, oh, that's that congregation. Talking all kind of madness. Okay, go back to where we was at. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered. Them. So God's spirit gathered the records that we have today. Don't you and your half a degree, you might have barely left out of high school. Now you're doing research in books written in Greek and Latin and Hebrew and getting all confused up. Then you want to go on a TV show and try to battle an Edomite who speaks fluent Greek and get humiliated. Because you want to dabble in something, you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know languages. You barely speak English. At least in England, don't y'all what they say? Y'all speak the Queen's English. That's they say that's the pure English. We got garbage. America got garbage English. We got Ebonics English over here, right? Captain Hoshea, he know what I'm talking about. From there, let's go back to uh, Revelation one. Revelation chapter one and verse three. Blessed is he that readeth, 
And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Y'all see that part right there? And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Let, let me tell you something. One part says read, one part says hear. We did the reading already. Let's talk about the hearing. Give me that Romans 10, verse 17. Hearing is good. Hearing builds faith. Many times you men and women often ask, how do I build my faith? Paul gave you the secret in Romans 10, verse 17. Read that. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith comes by what? By hearing. Faith comes by hearing, hearing, hearing. Just like you know, uh, your children will know every Barney song, every what I'm Sesame Street songs. You remember when you was little, you couldn't, you, like I, I'm always bad at math, but I remember, in English, but I remember they used to have something called, when I was young, Schoolhouse Rock. Y'all know them things? I'll be taking a test and I'll be like, conjunction, junction, what's your fun? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I'm just a bill and I'm only on, I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. I, I, I learned by hearing. And the, the music, it stuck in my mind. Me just reading, I couldn't retain it. But it was through music that I retained it. The hearing that I retained it. What was that other one? Verb. Remember the black guy? It was verb. I forgot. It was a black guy with an afro. I can't remember. Verb, that's an... No, it was Schoolhouse Rock. Same thing. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. You older ones in here know what I'm talking about. All right, see there? Only three brothers knew what I'm talking about. You don't know... Oh, you from England anyway, so you don't even... Talking to you. <laughs> Read that again. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And in case you're confused about what you should be hearing to build your faith, he says, hearing by the word of God. That's what I tell people. Some you got to learn your, you got to understand your own particular learning curve. Some of you can read and retain. Some of us cannot. Some of us must hear to retain. You got to know what works for you. Okay, I can't sit up late and read. You ever start reading and get the devil jump on you, fall asleep? <laughs> I said, that's the damn devil. I cannot do it. But if I'm listening, I can stay awake. I'm like, oh, okay, there, yeah, okay, I'm going to write that down. Rewind that. Uh-huh, that's it right there. That's, that's how I learn. Everybody ain't the same, so don't be comparing yourselves to each other. We all got a different learning curve. But you're going to find out with the kids. All kids don't learn the same. The, the women have to figure out what works for this particular child right here. That's why a lot of times black teachers are better than European teachers because they, 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 they uh, invest themselves to the children learning. And they try to figure out what allows this child to learn opposed to another one. Rather than say, oh, they got ADHD, just give them medication. No, you got to figure out what makes this child tick, what makes him learn, what makes her learn. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Let's go back to Revelation 1. Revel That's why a lot of times sisters don't know the big job they got. There's a big job. Give me that in uh, uh, First Maccabees 7. You know what I want, right? Yes. I remember one sister said, I wish I could do what y'all men do. No, you don't. You don't want to, believe me, you, don't like, you won't like getting spit on, spit on and threatened to get beat up or a gun pulled out on you, sister. Stay in your lane and deal with them hard head children. Read that. You know what I want, right? First man could be seven. Second uh, me seven, seven, seven. seven. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Second Se man could be seven. Second Maccabees chapter seven, verse and twenty-seven. Verse 27. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. Oh my son. Have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age. When it says gave thee suck three years, our foremother used to uh, breastfeed the babies for three years, the first three years of life. Go ahead. And endured the troubles of education. Y'all see that? Endured the troubles of education. Out of her seven sons, you got to figure, you got you to gotta sit down and figure out what she means by the troubles of education. All seven sons were not the same. Each of them had a different learning curve. I got it. I got it. Each of them got a different learning curve. Put that right there. I got it. Ah! She had to figure out, out of them seven boys, what worked for each of them. Okay? 
What got each of them to learn when it came to math, when it came to English, not English, reading, arithmetic? You know, she had to figure all that out. The scriptures, what got there, got them learning. Let's go back to Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Go ahead. And keep those things which are written therein. And keep those things that are written therein. What verse you at? Verse, the end of verse three. Go ahead. For the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Come on. Verse four. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Read it again. John chapter 1 and verse, I mean, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Write this down, Asia Minor. You have to, because you got Asia in terms of China, then you got Asia in terms of Asia Minor. Watch this, give me Acts chapter 6 and verse 9. Acts chapter 6 and verse 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libertines. Of the Libertines. And Cyrenians. And Cyrenians. And Alexandrians. And Alexandrians. And Ale Alexandrians were in Egypt. Cyrenian was North Africa. Okay. Somebody look up Libertines for me. You got a Bible dictionary? Look that up for me. Who got one? Look it up, look it up, look it up. I know Cyrene was North Africa and Alexandria was in Egypt. But both of them, too, was Africa. I'm just curious about the Libertines. I didn't look that one up yet. You looking it up? All right. Libertines. But there were synagogues there. There were synagogues. And these men had came and spoke and stood before I got it, Stephen. Bishop. You got it? Yes. What does it say? Libertines. Captive Jews brought to Rome by Pompey in 63 B.C. Liberated sub subsequently and, how you say this word, and repatriated to Palestine, where presumably they built a synagogue still occupied by, the, by their descendants a century after Pompey's Palestinian campaign. Okay, so they came from Rome. All right, so these Jews came from, that's what you read, right, Solomon? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's go back. Acts 6 and 9. Acts 6 and verse 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them Cilicia, and of Asia, dispute, disputing with Stephen. So it says, and of Asia, referring to Asia Minor, which is around the Mediterranean Sea. Give me Acts 16, verse 6. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Mm. After they were come to Mysia. Wait, 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 wait. I want you to see that. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, meaning Asia Minor. So you got to pause there. The Spirit didn't want them to teach in Asia Minor at that time. At that time. Watch this. Give me uh, Acts 19.26. Acts 19.26. Acts 19.26. Acts 19, 26. Acts 19 verse and verse 26. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul have persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands. So what does that prove? That sometime later, the Spirit said to Paul and them, now it's time to preach throughout Asia. But what we read in Acts 16, at that time, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost said, do not go there. Now is not the time. There's nobody going to wake up at that time. The Spirit said, you have to wait till later. That's why sometimes we want to go to certain places and the Spirit will be like, there's be a block. We can't get there. There's another scripture in Acts, I forgot where it is, where Paul had a dream. And it said, the Spirit said, he had, I think it was said Macedonia, said he had a dream that there were believers in Macedonia. Anybody know what that is? Just popped in my mind, just popped in my mind. Uh, 
Look up Macedonia. This should y'all should be able to see a precept in there. Mm, bear with me a second. I'm just looking, looking, looking. Acts 16 and 10, is that it? Uh, where's the one about the dream? Where is it? 16 and 5, you said? 16 and 9. And the vision appeared unto oh, Paul. Oh, 9. Isn't that what we just read? No? No, we read 16. Read, and read nine. that. Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. And the vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. Hey, start up above it. <clears throat> Watch this. Start at 7. Verse 7. After they were come to Mysia, they assayed. Now, look at, remember verse 6. It said, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Y'all see that in verse 6, right? Read down. After they were come to Mysia. After they, they were come to Mysia. They assayed to go into B Bithynia. Bithynia. They Bithynia. wanted to go into Bithynia. Go ahead. But the Spirit suffered them not. The Spirit blocked them. No, don't go there either. Go ahead. And they passing by Mysia came to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. See that? So the Lord will sometimes block your way from certain areas, certain regions, certain countries, certain states. Don't go there. There's nobody there yet. I want you to go here. We got to do things in God's time. Everybody understand that? Watch this. Let's go from there. 1 Corinthians 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. So they obviously had a church in churches of Asia, churches of Asia Minor. They were churches built up by the time Paul had written this letter. Okay, let's go back from there. Let's go back to Revelation 1 and 4 once again. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now those seven spirits are seven archangels which are before his throne. We went over this last week. Those, as we read down, it's going to tell you that also about them seven spirits which are the seven lamps of the Lord which represent the seven churches. Go ahead. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Now pause right there. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness Witness. Give me that precept in um, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 55 and 4. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Remember, we go in there because it said Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. Go ahead. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. The Lord gave Christ for a witness to the people. A leader and commander to the people. Christ is a leader and commander of the people. That's some heavy stuff right there. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. From there, let's go back. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. Verse 5. Verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. And he is the first begotten of the dead. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, please. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. Where the Apostle Paul addressed the same thing concerning Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that slept. And become the first fruits of them that slept. Letting you know he was the first to rise from the dead. Go ahead. Let's go back. Let's go back. Actually, give me a... Uh, Give me 1 Peter's 1 and 3. 1 Peter's 1 verse 3. 1 Peter's chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ from the dead. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Let's go back to Revelation 1, 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us. Unto him that loved us. Unto him that loved us. Give me that in John 15, 9. Unto him that loved us. John 15, verse 9. John chapter 15 and verse 9. As the Father hath loved me. As again, the Father. Again. Sorry. As the Father hath loved me. As the Father hath loved me. So have I loved you. So have I loved you. Go ahead. Continue ye in my love. Continue ye in my love. That love goes right back to Deuteronomy 7 and verse uh, 6 and 7. You need another mic? Yes, Diane. Give me that in Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 6 and 7. And verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Go ahead. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. Here it comes. But because the Lord loved you. This is the same love Christ said in John 15 verse 9. This is the same love John the Apostle, John the Revelator spoke of in Revelation 1 verse 5. Go ahead. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. So the Lord loved us because of the oath he made with our ancestors, our forefathers. Okay. That's where that love comes from. Let's go back to Revelation 1 and 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins he's, in his own blood. He's the one that washed us from our, our own wickedness. Give me that in um, Hebrews 9, 14. It's his blood that washes us from our sin. Our sins are not washed away because of our, quote unquote, good works. He, Our sins are washed away because of the sacrifice Christ gave for us. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works. The dead works is the breaking of the commandments. That's the dead works. Read it again. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Right. Now, because he purged us from our dead works, our breaking of God's law, now we can serve the living God. How so? By keeping the commandments. That's through Christ's blood. Give me that in uh, Revelation 12. Go to Revelation 12, and I want verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Watch this. Pay close attention. And they overcame him. And they overcame him. Referring to Satan. His ver read verse 9 so we understand who he's talking about. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now this great dragon... This old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, is the spiritual demon as well as the United States of America, Esau, because he, Esau, is the children of the devil. Everybody understand that? They are their children. Give, I know some of you get confused, like, huh? I don't get it. Give me that in, uh, I believe it's Genesis chapter 4. And we and remind me to come back to Revelation 12. Yes, sir. Yes, they are the children of the devil. I'm not saying it based on any kind of racist rhetoric. I'm saying it based on scripture. Get mad now. Call your mama. Read that. Genesis 4. Let me look at it. Uh, 4 verse. Yes, that's it. Verse 7. Genesis 6. Start at 6. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 6. 
but unto Cain and to his offering. Ver Genesis 4, verse 6. Sorry. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Why are you mad, Cain? Go ahead. And why is thou countenance fallen? Why is your countenance fallen? Remember, the law of sacrifice was instituted during the time of Adam and Eve. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. I know some of y'all knew. The law of sacrifice was instituted with Adam and Eve when you read Genesis 3 and verse, what verse is that? 21. Read verse 21. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. Talk about animal sacrifice. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. The coats of skin was supposed to do what? Cover them from their sins. What was done? What was that? That's a parable. That's a metaphor right there. It's talking about animal sacrifice. Well, how do you know it's talking about sacrifice? Let's look down at Genesis 4 and verse 3. Genesis chapter look, 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 Genesis 4 and 4. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. How did Abel know about animal sacrifice? Because of Genesis 3, 21. Animal sacrifice was introduced there. The blood of the animal gave at that time the forgiveness of sin. So now Abel brought what was commanded. Watch what Cain does. Read verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. Right, because Cain brought fruits and vegetables. Go ahead. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thou countenance fallen? Why are you mad and why your face look like that? Go ahead. If thou doest well. If you obey what I said through your mother and father of animal sacrifice. Shalt thou not be accepted? Won't I accept you then? Go ahead. And if thou doest not well. If you disobey me by breaking the commandment I gave your father and mother to give you. Sin lieth at the door. Sin is at your door. Go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto Satan shall be his desire. Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. That thou is Satan. And Satan shall rule over you. Meaning what? Satan going to be your daddy. Satan will be your father. Satan will be your God. That's what he's talking about right there. Now, let's go on back now. I said all that because I had to make my point. Let's go on back now. We was in Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why did it say the old serpent? Because it's the same serpent in Genesis, the third chapter. That's why it says old serpent. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan. And Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. Which deceiveth the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And his allies were cast out with him. Now jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. I mean 11. I'm sorry, 11. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Stop right there. The only way, brothers, sisters, we can overcome Satan and his minions, which is Esau, Edom, the only way we can overcome them, it says right there, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the only, that's why we got to give all honor and praise to the Lord for Christ. Read that again so we can, I want that to sink in and marinate. It's not, we're not overcoming on our good works. Because the Bible says all our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. No matter how good we think we is, yeah, I said it, we think we is. I said it like that on purpose. We ain't nothing. The Bible says we overcame them by the blood of the lamb. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by, their, by the word of their testimony. And the word of our testimony is the testimony God gave us concerning Christ. It's not your individual testimony because your individual testimony is garbage. I'm going to say it again. Your individual testimony is garbage. Give me that precept, Psalms 132. Now I know you're looking at me. Why my testimony got to be garbage? Your testimony is garbage because the second you get mad at me or any of the leadership, you give us the finger and you walk out the doors. Didn't we just see that last year? Hey, hey, Bishop, you know what's funny? Um, I remember we was doing those um, 
IUIC videos, little ten minute videos about um our little testimony after all the thing happened. I remember her sister did her testimony. She said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm here, I'm rock solid, and I'm good, and I'm good with IUIC, and this is how I came in. And two days later, she was talking all kinds of evil about us and left with the other Negroes. You see that? That's that's why your testimonies are all garbage. That's what Christ said. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Because right now, you talk smack right now. So your testimony ain't what the Lord is looking for. Get that in Psalms 132. Psalms chapter 132, 12. verse 11. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Meaning of the sperm that comes from you, I will come and sit on your throne. Watch this. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. See what it says about us? If we shall keep the testimony that God teaches us. Not your testimony. Again, let me say it again. Your testimony is garbage. The second you get angry, you're out the door, and tomorrow you might be a Muslim or a Seventh-day Adventist. So your testimony is garbage. My testimony is garbage. It's nothing. Our, my testimony, God's not looking for. He wants to hear the testimony that he taught us concerning his son. In case you didn't know it, that testimony is more important than anybody in this room, anybody listening. Read that again. Verse 12, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. In case you forgot the testimony, read verse 11 again. Verse 11, the Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Now let me tell you something about that verse right there. That verse proves there's no such thing as immaculate conception. Let me say it again. That verse proves there's no such thing as immaculate conception. So, for your mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers that are following an immaculate conception doc doctrine, God's not looking. That's not the testimony God's looking for. The only way you're going to sit on the throne, read it again from verse 11. Psalms chapter 132, verse 11. The Lord have sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Only way we're going to sit on thrones, brothers, is we got to follow the testimony God gave about Christ, that he would come through the seed of David. If you got any other thing in your head, this ain't for you. You better go on back to Creflo, go on back to T.D. Jakes, go on back to Juanita Bynum, go on back to Joel Osteen. Give me another one. Go on back to Billy Graham dead. Benny, Benny go on back to Benny Hinn. Go on back to this ain't for you because you don't believe the testimony God gave of his son that he would come through the fruit of his loins. Give me the next precept. Is it Acts 2? Just popped in my head. It says the same thing. Right. I want that one that mentions David in Acts, Acts, Acts 2 and 30. Start at 29. Acts 2, 29. It's saying the same thing Psalm said. Watch this. Acts chapter 2 and verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. The word patriarch means forefather. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried. David, dead and gone. Go ahead. And his sepulcher is with us unto this day. A sepulchre is the graveyard. The gravestone's right there. Go ahead. Therefore, being a prophet. Because David was a prophet. And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him. God swore with an oath to David. That of the fruits of his loins. That of the seed, the sperm that comes from his loins. According to the flesh. That's the proof right there that it's talking about sperm. According to the flesh, not spirit. According to the flesh. Go ahead. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So if you got any other testimony other than that, you in the wrong place, and this Bible is not for you. You got some Egyptology, Christian crap all in your head. This is not for you. Let's go on back to Revelation. We was in 12, right? Yes, sir. 12, and what verse was that we was at? 11? I forgot. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. 
And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. So we're going to overcome by the blood of Christ. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. And by the word of their testimony, which is the testimony God taught us about his son. Not your testimony. Go ahead. And they loved not their lives. And they loved not their lives. We love not our lives. Go ahead. Unto the death. Unto the death. So let's go on back to Revelation 1 now. Revelation 1 and we're at verse 6 now, right? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. And have made us kings and priests unto God. Wait, start at 5 again. I want to read into that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Y'all see that? And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Give me Revelation uh, 510. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. Now from there, watch this, watch this. Revelation 20 and 4. All Re these things connect. These are the precepts that connect. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon and them. And they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And power was given unto them. That's the judgment that's given to them. Go ahead. And I saw the souls of them. That were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. They lost their lives. Go ahead. And for the word of God. And by which had not worshipped the beast. Which had not worshipped the white man. Neither his image. Neither the white image of Jesus. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Neither believed their political policies or religions. Or in their hands. And didn't support it with their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Years. Go ahead. Uh, Read five. Verse five. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. You know who that rest of the dead is? Give me that precept, Zechariah 13 and 8. But the rest of the dead live not again. That's your mothers and your fathers, sisters and brothers, friends, uncles and aunts that have rejected this truth. These words of these scriptures, they died in sin. I know some of you, I know the women right now, but my, my mama, my mama, she, she read the Bible all her life. Yeah, with that white image of the beast on the wall back there. You ain't fooling nobody, sister. Your mama was the devil. Read that. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Here it come. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Do y'all see the word land right there? It don't say lands. It says two parts in all the land. That's talking about one particular land, Babylon the Great. Read that again. And it shall come to pass that in all the land. Because that land, as watch, read on. Saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts shall be cut off and die. Two out of three of us shall be cut off and die here in Babylon. Go ahead. But the third. But the third shall be left therein. Shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will bring the third part, th that's the key, through the fire. That fire is not just a spiritual fire. That fire is a literal fire. Watch the, why, wait, hold that, uh, uh, Solomon. Get that in Revelation 18. I'm talking about that fire now. 18 and 9. Verse 8. Oh. Revelation chapter eight, 18. Verse 8 and 9. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. Y'all see that fire right That fire right there is the same fire in Zechariah 13. Go ahead. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go on back. Going back to Zechariah. No, no, no. I don't want to go there now. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2. 
See, I didn't write these notes down. It just popped in my head here. 2 Thessalonians 2, I think I want verse 10. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. 2 yeah, Thessalonians. Is the, 12 is the point. Now, we're we going here to explain about some two-thirds that's cut off here to help explain the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years was up. Here you go. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. See that? That's talking about our mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. You try to give the word of God to, and they go, I ain't believing that crap. I'm following T.D. Jakes. I don't believe that crap. I follow Creflo. I don't believe in that crap. I follow Joel Osteen or Juanita Bynum or Paula White. I don't believe none of that Israelite crap you saying. It says, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Watch this. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The lie they believe is that, is that Christ is a white man. The lie that they believe is that Jesus Christ, a white man, died for all races, people, and tongues on the planet Earth, and everybody can be saved in white man Jesus. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. This is the verse that explains the rest of the dead live not again. Read that verse 12 again. That they all might be damned. Do you see that word? Damned. So your mothers are damned. Some of your fathers are damned. Some of your children are damned. Damned. That's some heavy stuff right there. <laughs> Read that again. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had pleasure in breaking God's law. I want Christmas. I want Thanksgiving. I want New Year's Eve. I want pants on women. I want pork, shrimp, and scallop. That's what I want, damn it. I want white man Jesus. That's what they wanted. That's what they got. That's the lie God believed, gave them. That's why you, there's no scripture. There's no magic scripture, brothers or sisters. Can you talk to my mama? Maybe if you say it, she'll, no, 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 no. I don't have a magic scripture. The same scripture I gave you is the same or you gave her. She didn't believe it? Nope. She didn't believe we went to slavery on ships? Nope. Okay. What can we do then? There's nothing we can do. Bye-bye. See you later. Now, the re I often, when I talk about those that are damned, I always try to preface it by them that die in their sin. I'm not talking about the brother or sister that walks by and says, ah, to hell with that. I'm not talking about them. Why? Because the day you reach out to them might not be the day God called them to wake up. What example do we have about that? The apostle Paul. Paul had heard the gospel. He rejected it day after day and was killing the church. But it wasn't until Christ said, today's your day. Pow, nigga. Now he woke up. Oh, shoot. Then Paul woke up. Everybody has a particular day, a particular month of a particular year, wherein we are chosen and called to wake up. So that's why I always say, if our, our people hear this truth and they die in that sin, in their sins, they're damned. They are damned. Not, but I'm not referring to the man or woman or brother or sister that walks by and rejects it that day. Because they might wake up next week, next month, or next year. You never know. Only the Lord knows. Everybody understand what I'm saying? All right. Let's go on back. We was in Rev Where was we at? Why did I go there? Revelation, Revelation 20 and 5. Thank you. Thank you. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. That's your mothers and fathers, aunts, uncles, cousins who die in their sins having rejected the truth. Y'all heard what I said? Having rejected the truth. Uh, let me say it again. I know some of y'all might be simple up in here. I'm not talking about, because y'all often ask, what about during the time of uh, Marcus Garvey when the truth, well, I'm not talking about that. Thessalonians 2 wasn't talking about that. Second Thessalonians 2 was talking about the word of God comes out in the earth, and they reject it. That's not talking about during the time of Marcus Garvey and them. They ain't talking about the time of even MLK. They didn't, the truth wasn't out like it is now. But now, with all these men and women, the truth is out. Now we can clearly say, you've heard the truth. You died in your sins. Okay, everybody understand that now. All right, all right. Read that again. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. 
This is the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. Now, we went over this before, so I can look at the video. Let's go on back to Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7, I think we're at. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. The clouds are the chariots. Write that down. The clouds are the chariots. Give me that in uh, Psalms uh, 104. Give me that. Psalms 104 about them clouds. You know what I want? Solomon, right? Uh, no, sir. It's in Psalms 104. Look around verse oh, 3. Oh, verse 3. Psalms chapter 104 and verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who maketh the clouds his chariots. That right there is a, a, a metaphor in itself, an allegory. Who maketh the clouds his chariots. Meaning he travels. It don't mean God travels in a puff of smoke. When it's talking about the clouds, it's talking about his traveling vehicles. His, it's what the white man calls UFOs. And that's what the angels are in. Remember in Ezekiel 1, it talked about the wheel. With give me, give me that real quick. Ezekiel chapter 1. We'll go over that another time, but I just want to touch on it. Mm. Ezekiel chapter 1. Let me look. 16. Mm. Yes. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 16. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. Green. And they, and they four had one likeness. Mm -hmm. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So this chariot was like a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Go ahead. When they went, they went upon their four sides. Mm -hmm. And they turned not when they went. You know what it means? To, and they turned not. You know how when you're in a car and you want to turn, you got to make that turn like that? The chariots don't do that. When the chariots travel and they want to go left, they go like that. When they want to go right, they go like that. They don't have to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm, they don't got to do that. Mm, they don't have to roll like that. Read. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them mm. four. Go ahead. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Watch this. Go ahead. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. Wait, imagine this. They gave an example in, that's the movie, Black Panther. Remember when she was flying that chariot? It was with her, with her mind. They got that from this. That's what that part means. Uh, whither the spirit was to go, they went. Wherever your spirit, the spirit of them uh, uh, angels wanted to go, that's where they went. They didn't have to think about it and t make a term. No, I want to go left. I'm bing, just like the right bing, down, boop, up, boop, just like that. Wherever the thought, your thoughts were to go, that's how that chariots, these chariots roll. Read verse 20 again. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So the spirit and the chariot was connected. It was one. So when they, when they, <laughs> you got to think about it. When the spirit, when the angel got in, the spirit connected with that vehicle. They became one. Go ahead. When, tho when those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So the spirit of the angels was in the chariot. That's how you everybody understand. I know it's kind of hard and difficult to comprehend because we men... But that's what it's making reference to. Let's go on back now to Revelation 1 and verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every, one, every eye shall see him. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. When them chariots come, everybody's going. They had that movie V. Remember that movie V back in the day? Everybody said there's an invasion. When it says every eye shall see. Give me that in Habakkuk 3. It might be 16. I can't remember. It's been a while. Just bear with me. 
Habakkuk, I mean, yeah, Habakkuk, not Hosea. Habakkuk, chapter 3. You know what verse I want, Solomon? Verse 16. Yes, that's it right there. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 16. When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself. Because he was terrified by the visions he saw. Go ahead. That I might rest in the day of trouble. Habakkuk said, I want to be resting in the day of trouble. When the day of the Lord comes, he says, please let me be at rest. I don't want to be alive walking around the earth. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people. When Christ comes up to the people, here it comes. He will invade them with his troops. He will invade them with his troops. That's why you got movies called Star Invasions and This Invasion. And what's the one with Will Smith for uh, Independence Day invasion at a body snap. All those movies about invasions come from the biblical text, the writings of our forefathers. That's where they get that from. But it, let's make it little green men with big heads and, and, and eyeballs and all of this and just take me to your leader. And, and here go the white man. Oh, he stuck me with something up my, my behind. What the hell is this? Ain't nobody playing with your nasty stinger behind. That was any nasty white folks. Oh, he deep. He prodded me. Get the hell out of here. You nasty sum of a... Give me a... Excuse me. Give me a... <laughs> Matthew 24 and 30, please. Invasion. Invasion. Matthew chapter 24 and verse... We want 30 and 31. 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Coming in the clouds of heaven. So Matthew's saying the same thing that John said about the clouds of heaven. Christ coming with the clouds of heaven. Go ahead. With power. With power. And great glory. And great glory. And he shall send his angels. See that? And he shall send his angels. Go ahead. Which with are a, the living creatures. Go ahead. With a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together. His elect from the four winds. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. He for, shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Read. From one end of heaven to the other. From one end of heaven to the other. So his elect, give me that, you know the precept for that in Isaiah? The 43 or 45? 45? Yeah, give me that about his elect. Now, there might be a Christian sitting in here. See? He said he's going to gather the elect. That's anybody that believes in Jesus. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. So the elect that the angels are gathering are only the Israelites. So can you please tell the people in the churches in Creflo Dollars Church and T.D. Jakes, God ain't coming to save you. He's only coming for the Israelites. That's what the Bible says. So you can uh, 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 throw your money around at T.D. and Creflo and Juanita Bynum and whoever the hell Benny Hinn. You ain't getting saved, brother or sister that's following. I'm telling you straight. You were, I, what, is, what, what, what denomination are they anyway? What are they? What are they? Uh, oh, they say, I'm non-denominational. Yeah, anybody could go. The Bible says the Lord's looking for the elect. And the elect is who, brothers and sisters? Israel. Israel. If you ain't coming that way, you ain't coming. Sorry. Don't say you never was warned. You was warned. Give me that Luke 9, 26, 27. Non-denomination. I heard it all now. Crazy. I Luke, guess they feel safe. I'm safe. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Now, that's a heavy verse right there. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Meaning when they see them chariots coming, let's go back to Revelation 1. Let's go and explain. Watch this. Let's go back to Revelation 1, 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, mm -hmm. and they also which pierced him. Wait, 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 wait. And they what? And they also which pierced him. What is Christ telling us? That the men that pierced him when he was on the cross, 
They'll be back in these last days. They're walking the earth today. Wouldn't it be messed up? Because you know in the Roman army, in the Roman army, you did have Israelites in the Roman army. Wouldn't it be a shame if that was you? And your mind don't get opened up until, imagine this, when you see the Lord and the chariot is coming, your mind opens up. And it was you. And you see you standing in the Roman garments, Roman with your spear, and stab Christ in the side. You see yourself in your Roman garments, and you're banging the, the what's them things, them big nails? What them things called? Them spikes through the hands of Christ and through his feet. That's, we feel better by saying it was just literal rope white folks. That feel good to just say that. We feel better about yourself then. All right. Oh, let's just say it's white folks. All right. You, their mind going to open up. Well, as they were, remember they was whooping Christ? And let me say this. Them black folks that, that was, remember they, they uh, remember said uh, they flogged Christ. And another group put the crown of thorn on his head and smacked him and said, prophesy unto us. Who hit you? Imagine when you see the Lord, your mind opens up and it's revealed. And you see it. Right in your mind, that was you that did that evil. That was you. You're going to get put to death. See, when people say there's no such thing as regeneration, you, once you're dead, that's it, you're an idiot. Stop listening to these Christian white folks. They don't know the Bible. Read that again, Revelation 1-7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Even so, it is true. Read verse 8. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, y'all see that part right there? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. So Christ is telling you, he says, another name I got is the Almighty. That, give me that precept in Daniel, no, Isaiah, I'm sorry, 714, 9 and 6. Give me that. Isaiah 9 and 6 about the Almighty. Isaiah 9 and 6. People be, keep on playing. Keep on playing with the Bible. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. You see that part? The Mighty God. That's why he said he was called the Almighty. Go ahead. The Everlasting Father. And it says the Everlasting Father because the one we thought was the Heavenly Father in the beginning was always Christ. <laughs> Go ahead. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Peace. Go ahead. Of the increase of his government. What's that word? Of the increase of his government. What's that word? Government. 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 A lot of y'all, some of y'all in here right now, y'all think the Lord is setting up a, a uh, Sunday school church. No, he's setting up a government. See, the, the reason we always think Sunday school church is because black and brown people, we've never been a part of anything Give me a word, anything great, any kind of structural thing. We've never, we're not there. So we always think low level. Oh, Sunday no, government, government. In every government, there's a top guy. Oh, that's the Lord. He's going to be the top. And under him, there's going to be sections. You got the 12, then you got the rest of the 144 under that. There's going to be a government, a structural system set up. And that, this all right now, what we're doing, this is proving, this is proving ground right here. We're proving ourselves to the Lord. And he's going to choose who is worthy to sit in what seat. Everybody understand that? From there, from there. Give me, I want to go to Exodus now. Is it Exodus 6 where he six says, three. yeah, give me that. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the mighty name of God Almighty. You see that? Ha! Go ahead. But by my name Jehovah. Was I not known to them? Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. He said he appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as by the name of 
God Almighty. So you'll read that and go, oh, that's the Heavenly Father. That's the Father, Father. It is the Father, but not the Father that you're thinking. Go back to Revelation 1 and 8. Revelation chapter 1. That's why Christ said, when they said, teach us to pray, Lord, he said, well, pray it like this. Our Father, which art in heaven. The Father he was talking about was not himself, but his Father. Everybody understand that? There is a Godhead in heaven. I know our little black minds, we can't comprehend it. What a Godhead? Yes, there is a Godhead. There is a government in the heavens. Remember, we read over the past few weeks, we've been reading about the 24 elders and all that. You got angels for the angels. There's a government up there. You don't do whatever the hell you want up there. <laughs> Go back. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, I just want to pause there for, just for a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Give me Proverbs. We read this last week, I believe, but I must touch on it again in, in Proverbs 8.22. Was it 8.12? 8.22, I think it is. It said he's Alpha and Omega, which is Greek for the beginning and the ending. What does he mean by that? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. The Lord possessed me in the beginning, 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 beginning of his ways. Go ahead. Before his works of old, mm -hmm. I was set up from the everlasting, from the beginning of or ever the earth was. From the beginning. Or ever the earth was. Go ahead. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled. Before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. You see that heavens with an S, right? Heavens with an S, meaning what? We got our first heaven here, which is the sky. The second heaven, which is space. And then you got the third heaven, which is where the Lord dwells. It says, what was that verse say again? When he prepared the heavens, I was there. He's explaining why they call him the alpha. Why they call him the beginning. He was set up from the beginning before everything else was created. Christ was the first of the Father's creations. The very first Go ahead. When he set a compass up upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. That's why it says he's the only begotten son. Because when he was the first of the creation, he said, then I was by him as one brought up with him. Meaning what? The father taught Christ everything. Before, the, before Michael was created, Christ was created. Before Uriel and Gabriel and all the rest, Raphael, Christ was made before every last one of them. That's why John said about Christ, he was preferred before me. Okay, read on. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing all way before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. My delights were with the sons of men. Real quick, Colossians. Colossians. Colossians 1. 26. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 26. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The Israelites, go ahead. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. So the mystery of the glory, which is Christ in you, had to be taught to the northern kingdom. Why? Because they were lost. Okay? They had to be taught the glory of Christ, that Christ came for them to bring them back to the Heavenly Father. Let's go back to Revelation 1. We'll go into that more detail later on. You want verse 9 now? Uh, yes. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can you pull me up the map of Patmos, Officer Alicia? 
I want the map of Patmos. This is Patmos in the Aegean Sea, okay? It looks like a little, you know, seahorses. That's the shape of it right there. Now, um, real quick, I sent you an article uh, that says John on the island. I think, did I send you something that says that? Send me, let's pop, put that in. All right, John of Patmos. Uh, can you see that, Officer Solomon? Uh, yes, sir. All right, start with says John of Patmos. John of Patmos, also called John the Revelator, John the Divine, John the, the Theologian. Theologian. And, theologian. Mm -hmm. And possibly John the Apostle, Greek, is the author named as John in the book of Revelation, the apocalyptic, apocalyptic text forming the final book of the New Testament. The text of Revelation states that John was on Patmos, a Greek island where by most biblical historians he is considered to be exiled as a result of anti-Christian persecution under the Roman emperor Domitian. Y'all see that? Anti-Christian meaning what? Anti-Israelites keeping the commandments. That's what it's making reference to. Under who? The Roman emperor Domitian. And Domitian was related to Titus and Vespasian. He was the younger brother of Titus. He became emperor. That dude was wicked as hell. Go ahead. Since the Roman era, Christians and historians have considered the book of Revelation's writer to be the Apostle John. He was. Go ahead. John the Evangelist, supposed author of the Gospel of John. However, a minority... Let's jump down. I don't want the rest of it. They always throw in some other stuff. Go all the way down. Go down. Go down. Let me see. I want Island of Patmos right there. Yes, read that. John is considered to be exiled to Patmos, undergoing a time of persecution under the Roman rule of Domitian. Revelation 1 verse 9 states, I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Adela Yarbrough Collins, a biblical scholar at Yale Divinity School, writes, Early tradition says that John was banished to Patmos by the Roman authorities. This tradition is credible because, because banishment was a common punishment used during the imperial period for a number of offenses. Among such offenses were the practices of magic and astrology. Prophecy was viewed by the Romans as belonging to the same category. So Rome considered any type of prophecy in the same category as magic and astrology. Go ahead. Whether pagan, Jewish, or Christian, prophecy with political implications like that expressed by John in the book of Revelation would have been perceived as a threat to Roman political power and order. Right, because during that time, Rome had, for example, they had uh, ten, there were ten hills and they had ten, uh, ten allies with them that were supporting Rome. So like when we bring it up to today's time, you got America with the ten common markets. So they were figuring out, hey, this is against Rome. We got to exile this guy. Watch, read on. Three of the islands in the Sporades were placed where political offenders were banished. Go ahead. John. John was allegedly. Hey, bring it down so we can see the words. Alicia, we can't see the. Yeah, right there. John was allegedly banished by the Roman authorities to the Greek island of Patmos, where, according to tradition, he wrote the book of Revelation. According to Ter Tertullian, in the prescription of heretics, John was banished, presumably to Patmos, after being plunged into boiling oil in Rome and suffering nothing from it. So they threw him in boiling oil, oil to kill him, and nothing happened. He didn't die. Go ahead. It is said that all in the audience of the Col Colosseum were converted to Christianity upon witnessing this miracle. This event would have occurred in the late first century during the reign of Emperor Domitian. Domitian, right. So let's go on back now. Let's go on back to Revelation 1. We're at verse 9 again. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he was banished there, 
not for being a thief or a liar or a murderer, but for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, that's why I said he was exiled for the testimony of Christ, not for his own personal testimony. <laughs> Go ahead. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Wait a minute. Give me that the Lord's day, Matthew 12 and 8. Can somebody jump up? It's Sunday, the first day of the week. Matthew 12 and 8. What is the Lord's day? Matthew chapter 12 and verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. That's the Lord's day. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath day. Go back. Revelations 1 and verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of, as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. So Christ gives John direction that what he sees, I want you to write it down, John. Why? For the last days for us today. Whatever you see, write it down. Go ahead. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Give me the map of the seven churches, Officer Elisha. All right. Y'all see this? This is seven churches of Asia, meaning Asia Minor. You can see, do your highlighted thing in the green. You can see it. You got Pergamum. You got Thyatira. Smyrna, Sardis, Philadelphia, Ephesus, Laodicea. Write this down. Ephesus was the capital of Asia Minor. Ephesus was the capital of Asia Minor. And you can see right off there. See Patmos? Do a little cursor there. Yeah. There's Patmos right there where John was. Right there. Right there, bottom left. See it? Patmos is written in red right there. Y'all, everybody see it? All right, that little island. That's where John was. And this letter had to go to these seven churches that we just read right there that we just mentioned. All right? So let's go on back now. What verse was you at? I just finished verse 11. Okay, verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And I turned to see the voice. Letting you know John wasn't asleep. He said, I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Go ahead. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. What does that mean? He saw a huge menorah. Like the menorah that was in the temple. Okay, that giant menorah. He saw that. He saw that thing on the island of Patmos. He was looking at it. Go ahead. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Wait, one, wait real quick. Give me that in Exodus 25. About this, the seven golden candlesticks. Exodus 25, 31, 32. Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his boughs, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. See three, that? Mm -hmm. three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. So it's describing that's the menorah that was in the temple. So John saw the same thing on the island of Patmos as he stood there and turned to see the voice that was talking to him. Go back to Revelation 1 and verse 12 again. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Wait a minute, stop. People get hemmed up, will try to hem you up when it says... <laughs> It says, one like unto the Son of Man. He said, oh, that ain't him. It was like him. No, 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 no. Oh, that was him. Oh, that was him. All right. The reason, now remember this year. This is written around the year 96 A.D., 96. Remember, Christ was crucified around the year 33 A.D. Everybody with me so far? 33 A.D. to around 96. You got about 63 years have passed. Let me say it again. This is 63 years later. John has not seen Christ for 63 years. Now he turns and says, this looks like Christ who I walked with. This looks like the man that raised Lazarus from the dead. This looks like, this looks like him. That's why he said, you ever see somebody you ain't seen from for elementary school? And you're looking at him. That looks 
like him. And you might not be 100% sure for a moment, but you got to just look for him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. If you ever been, you know people you've seen from, you ain't seen for years and years and years. You go, that looks just, I'm not sure, but it might, yeah, that kind of look. That's him. So read that again. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man. Now, wait, wait. Son of man. Son of man. Son of man. Son of man. Son of. You can't just run by that. Y'all be reading that on the street. Son of man because he came from man. I'm going to say it again. There was that proves he was not immaculately conceived. They called him the son of man because he was of man. Remember it said he would come from the, the loins of his far, forefather, David. Did we just read that? We read in Psalms 132. We read that in Acts 2. Now it's calling him son of man. Give me that John 145. People were playing games. Son of man because he didn't have no father. You simple as hell. Son of man because he had a father. Oh, moron. <laughs> read that. John chapter 1 verse 45. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of, of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Son of man. Son of man. Jesus, the son of Joseph. Give me the next one, Matthew 13, 55. Matthew chapter 13 verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Son of man. Son of man. Son of man. Go ahead. Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his, and his sisters, are they not all with us? With Get Romans them. 1 and 3. Romans 1 and 3. Romans chapter 1 verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Son of man, son of man, son of man. Hebrews 2.16 please. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. <clears throat> For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. For verily he took not on him immaculate conception but he said, wait, 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 don't keep going by. For verily he took not on him immaculate conception. The nature of angels, the angels didn't come by sex. God just created them just like when he brought forth Christ. It wasn't no, hey, hey, uh, 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 the hell is this? Read that again. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. He didn't come that way. Christ, when he came, he didn't come the way the angels came. When God just created them like that. Go ahead. But he took, he took on him the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham, son of man. Son of man. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Didn't we just read about his brothers in Matthew 13, 55? They, he had four brothers. He was made like them. So you mean his four brothers was immaculately conceived too? No! Son of man. Son of man. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. How could it be a faithful a high priest for us if he didn't go through what we went through? If he wasn't born like we was born? He had to, in order for him to be faithful and understand what we go through, mentally, spiritually, and physically, he had to be like us. He was made just like we were. Son of man. Everybody with me so far? Let's go on back. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white like wool. Now I'm going to say something about that right there. Get ready for what I'm about to say right there. Now! Jesus Christ was not walking the earth with the other 12 apostles with white hair. Let me say it again. When he walked the earth, he did not have white hair. How do we know he didn't have white hair? Here's the proof. Give me Mark 
14, 42. How old was Christ? Right, between 30, 33, right around there. How many, who in here is 30, 33? Raise your hand. Okay, look at all these young, this is a young dude. Now imagine if they had a head full of white hair. Just imagine, and at that age, everybody, you would spot them out quick and go, hey, this dude is in his early 30s. He got a head full of white hair on his head and his hair and his beard. He got a hard life. life. Something ain't right. Something wrong with him. Watch this. Mark 14, 42. Watch this. Mark chapter 14, verse 42. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Christ said, rise up. Let us go. He that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the mm -hmm. twelve, mm -hmm. and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, gave them a sign, token means sign, saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. Why did he have to do that? Why did he have to give a sign as who was Christ? Because he looked like the rest of them. He looked just, imagine, all they would have had to say is, that young guy, the 30-year-old guy with white hair, that's him. You, throughout all, you would spot this dude quick. Young guy with white hair on his head and hair on his face, but he couldn't be spotted. You could not identify him from the rest of them. So Judas said, the one I kissed is him. Read that again. Verse 44, and he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. Read. And as soon as he was come, he go up straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. Read. And they laid their hands on him and took him. Y'all see that? They knew that was, they said, that's the one we're supposed to get. Okay. You mean nobody else saw? Remember, many people saw Christ. Remember, he was in the temple overthrowing the freaking tables and stuff. They all saw him. But when he got around the rest of them, the, the 12 apostles, it was like, which one was he? Because he, they all was around a similar age, same look. Wasn't nobody looking starkly different? They looked very, everybody with me so far? Okay, so now back to Revelation. Chapter 1 and verse 14. Revelations chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So when the church, if you're, when y'all hear, if, when I'm on the street, when churches say, that's his glorified state. I don't bug out on that state. Yeah, and what's your point? What is your point? You're saying he came back black, but he walked to earth white? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, give us a scripture that says he walked to earth white. They, they, they ain't got one. Okay, read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Remember this. Two textures of hair primarily on the earth. Straight, thin hair or wool afro hair. Those are the two dominant hairs on the earth. Read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool is the operative word you want to pull out of there. Go ahead. As white as snow. And it was fully white. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire because according to Genesis 49 verse 12, his eyes shall be red with wine. Everybody got that? Write that down. Y'all should know that one already. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they had burned in a furnace. So now, I did this thing on one of the shout outs. I got some brass right here on my little bracelet. It's made out of brass. Yeah, hold that, Amaziah. Don't, I don't know. Let me burn you. I'm, I'm going to do it right here. Now, people go, oh, it burned in a furnace. It doesn't mean he was black. Let's see. Hey, can you zoom in, cameraman? Pay attention. Cameraman, I need you to pay attention. I need you to zoom in. I'm burning brass. <laughs> now, this thing better burn. I'm going to be mad as hell if it don't. Give me a weak old lighter here to hell. Where's it around with his torch? There's some damn Satan. Damn devil. <laughs> Is the fan blowing my fire? Oh, let me go under the table. Now, they're going to think, no, if I do under the table, they're going to think I did something to it. Okay, here it come, here it come. Can y'all zoom in? Can y'all just zoom in? Yeah, as far can, as it goes. Can, can y'all see it? Yes, sir. I'm going to turn it just a little bit so they can see. Okay, do y'all see it burning just a little bit? Okay, all right. I know the fire's kind of weak there, but it's burning a furnace. Like, I'm girl, it's burning a furnace. 
All right. I got some weak fire here. Oh, but it's getting burned right here. Do y'all see it getting blacker and blacker yes, and blacker? Black like me, black like... You ain't that black, Amazon. And actually, you are black, but not that black. Black like lava black. <laughs> black like uh, Captain O'Shea black. Black like... Uh, where's the, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the brother here with the pink lip? Yuri. Black like Yuri black. <laughs> Black like me, black. All right, out there. Now I'm getting text messages. Everybody hating me. They mad. Isaac, you ain't that black. I thought be quiet. You brown. <laughs> Can y'all see it? All right, that's all I'm doing. Just hold it up for them. Right there, right there. All right, right there. All right. Okay, all praise to the Lord. Now this little thing was weak as hell. I found a real fire. Be like, whoa, now that's a fire. So now, yeah. Go back to where we was at. Verse 14. Wait, go no, ahead. I'm going to say Verse something. 15. Let me see what brothers is texting me. They mad. Let me see. Yuri, don't be texting me because you mad. Uh, go ahead. All right. Oh, it says Riverdale Lighters. See that? See what they said? Metro Atlanta. Riverdale Lighters. You can't win it. Right. Okay, so where we at? Revelation Verse 1. 15. 15. Okay. And his feet like unto fine brass. As if they burn in a furnace. So a furnace is a roaring fire. You burn that thing, it gets black, black. That's the evidence, that's the proof. Go ahead. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he spoke very loud. Christ spoke very, he didn't speak with a Joel Osteen voice. He didn't talk soft. Give me that in Daniel 10, 5 and 6. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. Mm -hmm. Golden girdle. His right. body also was like the barrel, and his face as now the... Now, the barrel means green. It's the same description we read in Revelation 1. Go ahead. And his face as the appearance of lightning. He had a glow on his face. Go ahead. Of power. Go ahead. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Genesis 49, verse 12, he drank Wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. Go ahead. And his arms and his feet. His arms and his feet. Like in color to polished brass. Polished brass means brass burned in a furnace. Polished brass means brass burned in a furnace. That's what that means, meaning he was black. That's what that means. Read. I mean, go back now. Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Read. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So that's what, it, remember Revel, uh, Daniel, we just read it, said, and his face was like the appearance of lightning. When that part here, was says, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. He had a glow about him. Now, the two-edged sword, give me that Hebrews 4.12. <clears throat> the two-edged sword that John saw. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So when John saw the two-edged sword come out of his mouth, he's making reference to the scriptures, the laws of God. Go ahead. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's why when we teach brothers, when we teach sisters, we must use the words of God. Use the words in the Bible. God is telling you, you might think his words don't have no effect, but whoever hears his word, he said it's cutting them like a two-edged sword. Read that part again. Uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. God says his word does damage. You get these Edomites, the second when they walk by, ah, you're full of crap. The Bible's garbage. Just use one word, Esau. You know what they're going to do? They're going to look it up. Esau is a devout believer in research. You don't go to Edomite's house and ain't got no books. Oh, they got books. They're going to research. They got dictionaries too. And they pride their children on, know, on knowing everything. You ever walk into a store, you see blacks and whites. You have a shirt that says something. The only one that pays attention to your shirt is guess who? Esau. He's looking at that shirt. He's reading it. If he, got a, he or she got a phone, they're Googling it. That's what they do. 
So read that again, Solomon. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why when you make judgments, use the scriptures, bring out the laws of God. Okay, bring the laws of God out. That's going to cut people. Okay, read. Was that it? Yes, sir. So let's go on back. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was, was as the sun shineth in his strength. Now, I didn't explain the seven stars because he explains it further down, so that's why we're going to just keep reading, right? And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Do you all see that? He said, when I saw Christ, I fell at his feet like dead. Because remember, he saw Christ die, resurrect, and then he saw him ascend. That was the last time he saw Christ. That was 63 years ago. Now he sees him in glory. Go ahead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am the first. We have discussed that. And when it says he's the last, that's what it means. The first from the first Adam to the last Adam. Paul explains that in 1 Corinthians 15, but that's for another lesson because that's going to take a while. Go ahead. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He said, I have the keys of hell and death. Now, that's a heavy statement right there. And have the keys of hell and death. Give me that in Matthew 16, verse 19. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew. Verse, no, hold on. 16, verse 19. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, people read that and get confused. What does that mean? Look at John 20, verse 23. John 20, verse 23, if I'm not mistaken, explains exactly what that means. John chapter 20 and verse 23. Start at 22. 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Here it comes. Whosoever sins ye remit. Meaning forgive. Whosoever sins you forgive. They are remitted unto them. They are forgiven unto them. Watch this. And whosoever sins ye retain. And whosoever sins you don't forgive. They are retained. They will be held accountable. Now that's some heavy power right there. That's why in Revelation it says he has the keys of hell and death. Meaning what? Their sins are retained. You will have brothers and sisters like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm forget. Oh, 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 you think you are. I'm, I'm talking about when you do sins against brothers and sisters in the body. Like that, that uh, brood that ran up out of here doing, oh, let me tell you something. All their sins are retained. All of them. Because in order to get forgiveness, who must they first go to? You got to go your brothers. They have not done that. All their sins are retained. From Weaselil. Uzziah, the black hacker, Mac Thomas, uh, the Marshall, whatever the freak their names are, all, even the women that follow behind them, all their sins are retained. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. And don't blame Deacon Asaph, you can blame me. <laughs> Read it again. Verse 23. Verse 23. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. See, you read that and go, no, 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 I don't believe that. I was never taught that in Sunday school. Your Sunday school was garbage. Your Sunday school didn't have the spirit of God. Your Sunday school didn't have the Holy Ghost. Your Sunday school was made of the devil, the Bible speaks That's of. Right. That's why you didn't understand this. Now go back to Matthew 16 and 19. Matthew chapter 16. You think you're going to do evil and get away with it. Oh, you're not getting away. Read that. In verse 19. You're going to join with the oppressor against the sons and daughters of God Almighty and think your sins are forgiven? Oh, no. You better ask Judas Iscariot about that thing. Read that. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth, meaning whatever sins is, uh, what is the word in John? Remit. Remitted or retained. Go ahead. 
Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, meaning remitted, go ahead, shall be loosed in heaven. Meaning forgiven or not forgiven. That's the power Christ gave to the leadership. And that's what people read that. And whether you accept it or not, or believe it or not, it is what it is. It got to pertain to somebody. Well, who, who, is, who, is, who, is, who is that? Is it T.D. Jakes? Is it Creflo? Is it Juanita Bynum? Got to be somebody in the Israelite community. Okay. From there, let's go on back now. I know y'all nervous now. Good. You need to be nervous. Give, go back to what verse was that? Uh, verse 18. Give me Revelation 3, 7. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. You and think, shoot. go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And you women calling your husbands bitch ass. Y'all better, better reconsider that evil y'all doing. Don't think you're going to disrespect your Lord and the Lord is going to be like, oh, I forget. See, you, you know why women do that and think they can get away with it? They got Caesar Bogea on their mind. Jesus loves us all, everyone. So I could call my husband a B mm, and it's good with Jesus. The Jesus you're thinking about is the devil's sister. And I'm talking to two specifically up in here, right over there. I know they don't like me here. I don't give a damn. Wherever I go, the women hate my guts. I love it. Make my teeth white. Read that again. Revelation 3, 7. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things say of he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Here it comes. He that openeth. He that openeth. And no man shutteth. And no man can shut. And shutteth. And shutteth. And no man openeth. And saying the same thing that he gave to the apostles, the leadership in Matthew 16, 19, and what we read in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Read 1, 18 again. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. That's for those whose sins are retained. I'm going to say it again. The keys of hell and death are for those whose sins are retained. Tamed. You did much evil. Your sins were not forgiven because you did not take the proper biblical steps to seek mercy or forgiveness. You didn't do that thing. What did you say, Amaziah? Yeah. Go ahead. You got the mic right there. Yeah, then you're going to be on Facebook acting all holy, holier than thou. That's, right. that's garbage. Exactly. That's garbage. You're supposed to go to your brother and ask for forgiveness. Confess your sins to your brother and the evil that you did. Exactly. And let me give you a secret. If you do evil to your brother... Publicly, how must they repent? Publicly. So, because you know what brothers and sisters do? They do evil to you publicly, then on the side. Oh, yeah, brother. Or they call you on the phone. You know, I, I really, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. If you did it in private, you can rep go and repent in private. But if you did it publicly, then you're going to repent publicly. And guess what? Their pride will not allow them to do that. That's why their sins will be retained. Every last one of them. Let me do it with my right hand. Every last one of their sins are retained. Now, back to Revelation chapter 1, and we are in verse. Good. I hope it does hurt. Now do a video on that. Revelation 1, we are in verse 19. Verse 19. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, are the angels of the seven churches. See, that's why back in verse 16, I didn't explain it, where it says, and he had in his right hand seven stars. He's explaining it in verse 20. Read it again. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So notice this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So now these letters that we're about to read in the coming weeks, they're not written to Michael, Gabriel, and Uriel. You cannot write a letter. What are you going to email it to them? It's not talking about that. It's talking about the leadership over those churches. Now the word angel might confuse some of you. The word angel simply means messengers. Here's the proof. Give me Galatians 4.14. We're going to explain the angels of the churches. Write this down. 
the explanation of the angels over the churches, over the seven churches. Galatians 4.14. Let's start there. Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. And my temptation, my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. You see what Paul said about the uh, Galatians? They received them as an angel of God. Next precept, 1 Corinthians 6 and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Uh-oh. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Now you read that and go, oh, we're going to be telling Michael and Gabriel what to do. Listen, you ain't telling Michael or Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, none of them archangels nothing to do. You ain't telling them nothing. What that's talking about, give me the precept, Matthew 19, 28, where it says we shall judge angels. We just read it in Revelation 20 and 4, if I'm not mistaken. Read Matthew 19, 20, then read Revelation 20 and 4 once again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. We're explaining what it means by judging angels. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. See that? Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So when it says, know ye not that we shall judge angels, it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not talking about Michael and Gabriel and Uriel and Raphael. It's not talking about them. Now, if I'm not, go back to Revelation 20 and 4. I thought we read that. I could be wrong, but let me just take a quick look. Revelation 20 and 4. I don't think we... Read this one. Yeah, read Oh, that. yeah, no, no, we did. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones. And I saw thrones. Go ahead. And they sat upon them. And they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And judgment was given unto them. What type of judgment? Power to make judgments over who? The 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go back. From there, give me 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 17. We're still explaining about write these letters to the seven uh, angels over the seven churches. We're explaining, know ye not that the saints shall judge the angels? Read that. You said verse 7 or 17? 2 Samuel 14, verse 17. Verse, 2 Samuel 14, verse 17. Then thy handmaid said, The word of my Lord, the king, shall now be comfortable. For as an angel of God, so is my Lord, the king. See that what she said about him? That you're like an angel of the Lord, an angel of God. From there, give me 1 Samuel 29, verse 9. We're still explaining the term angels is reference to men on earth as well. You got to, when you read it, read it in context. <laughs> Go ahead. 1 Samuel 29, verse 9. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight. As an angel of God. As an angel of God. Now give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 10. There's another verse that trips brothers up. I'll be seeing y'all on the street hemmed up over this verse. Some of y'all just skip it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of of the angels. Now, who in their Bible got a number next to the word power? Anybody? You got a Solomon? Read what it says. Um, it says, that is a covering in the sight that she is under the power of her husband. So that's what it means by power. So read the verse again. First Corinthians 11 and verse 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power I mean on a her power to cover her head in obedience. Go ahead. On her head. That's what it means. Power on her head means power to cover her head obediently. Because of the angels. Because of her husband and the leadership and the men. Because the angels going into men. Because the question might be, what if she doesn't have a husband? What if her father died? Then guess what? That's where the men of Israel comes in. This is why I remember, uh, who's the one that covered herself when she saw Isaac? Uh, Rebecca. She asked the servant, she said, who is this young man? He said, that's my master, Isaac. And what did she do? She covered her head. Remember, she had already left her father for miles. She wasn't married, but she did what? Covered her head. Why? Because of the angels. What are the angels making reference to? Men on earth. That's what she did, the Israelite man. 
Does everybody understand that? So with that, we're going to close out. And I pray you got some understanding from today's lesson. Is that fair to say? All praises to the Lord. Also, how many of you are going to take the offices? Do y'all do y'all say who's going to take the offices of fifty? Tell who took it already. Okay, we're going to avoid the offices of fifty tests from now on, because let me tell you what happened. Some nice brothers in New York and Philadelphia and Jersey decided to cheat with the officers of 50 tests and disseminated the answers throughout Israel. This is why the white man don't give black people no positions of authority in their companies. Because Negroes ain't right. And you know, let me explain the danger behind it. Sisters, y'all gonna know what I'm talking about when I say this thing. This is why brothers say, they, some of you brothers, New York, where's New York camera? Where's the camera for New York right there? New York, you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all got the answer to the officers of 50 tests already. So we're going to change it up on you. That ain't going to be the test. You know? And I'm going to tell you the reason. The ones who have taken it that we know about, you're going to be demoted. Yes, you are. Yes, you is. You're going to be demoted because you ain't right. Let me tell you the danger behind that. We think, because an officer of 50 test deals with judgments, marital, brotherly, civil, ceremony. We deal with judgments on that test. Imagine, we have got an officer of 50. Now, we assume you took the exam. You know exactly how to judge matters. You know right from wrong. Now you're judging issues with a married couple. But you didn't pass the test based on your understanding. You cheated and wrote A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now you're sitting there like you got brothers sitting over here in Atlanta or Riverdale. I'll be sitting there. I'll watch y'all counsel people. Now imagine if that brother cheated on his exams. And we are assuming <clears throat> that he knows right counsel. But does he really know right counsel? No, because he cheated. So that's why those tests must be voided and it being reworked, rewritten. So whoever just took it, you can forget that. All right, with that, everybody. Have a good day. Love you all. Bless you. Bless your hearts. Bless your hearts. <laughs> now the brothers hate me. I hate that black nigga up there. It's all right. It's okay. I understand, Bishop. Hey, uh, brothers, sisters, make sure do not log off. Do not log off. Do not log off. Uh, there will be an, an announcement concerning the Passover. An announcement concerning the Passover to so all camps. Do not log off. All right. Uh, let's go through the, do our announcements right now while we're waiting for the, the announcement. The Passover announcement. Let's put it on the screen. Matter of fact, let me see if anybody got it. Hold on. Matter of fact, just hold on. We're going to hold on. We're going to hold off until the Passover announcement is made. Just give us a second. Give. Bishop, a second. All right, one second. I'm going to see if there's any announcements. Any? Okay, let's do bread and wine. Let's do bread and wine. The bread and wine is not ready. <sighs> How'd y'all like that class? <laughs> Get a Lord a hand for Bishop's class. Pray y'all learn something out of that. Uh, all right, I don't see any announcements here. Who's ready for Passover? Go this way. I'm trying to get my good side? Oh, all right. Okay, I got you, I got you. All right. Uh, I don't see any announcements as far as... Okay, all right. Y'all scared of that coronavirus or what? Y'all all right? Y'all went shopping yesterday? <laughs> Y'all waited two hours online, three hours, four? <sighs> you put it on the Jerusalem sign or something. All right, brothers and sisters, we gonna wait. We gonna wait. We gonna wait. All right, while we waiting, let's go.
Where'd you send it? While we're waiting, any new people here for the first time, please stand, introduce yourselves, let us know your name, where you're from, and how'd you hear about us. Any visitors here for the first time, man? Any visitors, period. Any visitors? I know there's some visitors up in here. Where you at? Come on, don't be shy. We family. I know, don't, yeah, don't turn the camera. Don't turn the camera. Shalom, brother. What's your name? Where you're from? And how'd you hear about us? Yeah, my, my name is Ernest. I'm from uh, Ellenwood. And, from uh, where? Ellenwood. right, right around Ellenwood, here. okay. Yeah. Heard about y'all through my son, Samuel. He goes here regular. Who's your son? That's him right there. Oh, okay. All praises. All praises to the Most High. All praises. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the mic. Hold the mic. So what did you think of the class? Was you able to follow along? Yeah. Did it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. All praise to the Most High. Your son's been teaching you your nationality, your God's laws, your true culture, correct? Yeah, yeah, he has. He's been very uh, informative. All right, all praise to the Most High. What tribe are you from? Judah. Judah. Yeah. All praise to the Most High. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. Come on, use your MOV feet, man. Bring the sister over there. Shalom, sis. What's your name? Where you're from? And how'd you hear about us? My name is Courtney. And uh... Shalom, sis. Uh, shalom. My name is Courtney. And Courtney? Yay. Yeah. Yes. Courtney, okay. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Am Can I you just speak up? up a little bit? I'm sorry. I'm nervous. Don't be nervous, <laughs> sis. Don't be nervous. Okay, I'm from Atlanta, but from uh, I moved from from there to Jonesboro. Okay. Uh, How'd you hear about it, sis? Him. <laughs> him? Well, one night I was shopping at Walmart and... Uh, Who's him? This guy right here. I don't know your name. I'm him? Sorry. I apologize. Oh, Officer Ira. Oh, okay, okay, brother, putting in work. I don't know. I don't know if you remember me or not, but remember we were talking about uh, we was in a parking lot. We was talking about the leggings and stuff like that. Remember? And I was like, "Excuse me, are you Hebrew Israelite?" And I was like, "I gotta go." And you was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait." But then when you tried to leave, I was like, "No, no, no, wait," because <laughs> you made me stay right here. So we got to talk. But yeah. So um, months went by, and um, I've kind of been looking for some things spiritually with God. Okay. And my coworker told me, he was like, Courtney, you said you're looking for a husband. And you said that all the things that you want, it seems like you need to be in a camp. So that's where you should go. Not for that, but just for everything else. You know what I mean? Okay. All praise to the most high, sis. All praise. So months later, you came on by. Now you're here. Yeah. So what did you think of class? Was you able to follow along? Did it make sense? Yeah, it was simple. It was pretty easy. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, all praise to the most high. All praises. Yeah. Welcome home. What tribe are you from? Judah. Judah. Welcome home, sis. Welcome home. Do we have any visitors? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, another sis. Okay. Shalom, sis. What's your name? Where you're from? Shalom. How'd you hear about us? Shalom. My name is Deja. Um, I heard about you guys through Sister Minwa by Israel. Sister who? Minwa by Israel. Oh, Manua, Sister Manua. Sorry, Manua okay, Israel. all praises, all praise. Um, and this is my second time coming. I came last Sabbath. Um, I plan to keep coming as long as the most I allows. <laughs> um, I brought for the first time my daughter as well. Okay, all praises. My name is Jamie. All praises, all <laughs> praises. That's what's up, yeah. sis. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what tribe are you from? Judah. Judah. All praises. Says, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah, we got a visitor on this side. I seen you run faster than that, brother. Cut, cut. One more cut. Oh, you already got a mic? Shalom, leadership. Most High Christ bless. Shalom, brother. Uh, officer, Most High Christ bless. Yes, sir. Officer Asa. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, I attend the headquarters camp, but I'm um, 
I just made a transition down here, uh, finalizing my paperwork this Tuesday, so I'll officially be. Wait, wait, wait where you from? New Jersey, but I go to headquarters. Is that Northeast? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to shut up. Shout, salute to uh, Deacon Malakaya, by the way. All right, so you from New Jersey. You coming from the camp up there in New Jersey, Philly, or yeah, headquarters? I'm in headquarters, yes, oh, headquarters. Sir. Okay, okay. So now you here with you here in Riverdale. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praise. We got another one. All praises. All praises. Why, why, why you left? Whoa, why you left the Northeast, man? Don't answer that, man. If you want to keep it rank, I wouldn't answer that if I was you, bro. I let it go. Don't answer that. That's a. Don't don't worry about that. Well, what, what tribe you from? Judah. All praises. Welcome home, brother. Oh, but my, by the way, um, wait, wait, um, Asa, take the mic back. Take the mic back. Because yes, you're, you're here now, but you're bringing others later on, right? Oh, yes. I'm bringing my wife and kids uh, this week. Okay, so to... your wife and kids are not here now, but they'll be here next week to fellowship here from now on. Yes, sir. I had, okay. to, I had to take care of business. And what? I had to take care of business, get the house together and everything for them. All praise to the Most High. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, the announcement is not ready yet. So let's go ahead and break bread. Everybody got bread and wine. And, and remember, brothers and sisters online, do not log off after we break bread until the announcement is made. Do not log off. All right? Don't log off. Everybody good? Bread and wine? Good? Thumbs up? All right, cool. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore? Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. All right, man, y'all ready? Men of Israel, are you ready? All ready. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? Don't log off. Do not log off. You ready, Bishop? Okay. Uh, we have a name change. IUIC Portland. Brother Micaiah formerly is formerly Pedakia. He is no longer a Greek. Okay. Oh, he changed his whole house. 
Jada, Lily Bot Israel, Abigail Faith Bot Israel, Daniel Abishai Ben Israel, Malachi Judah Ben Israel. All praise to the Most High. Also, there's a, a Passover online announcement. If you want to perform for the Feast of Passover, please submit your performance. I'm going to announce now. <laughs> uh, Alicia, can you post that thing I just sent you? Somebody sent to me. Well, not your mind. I was just I was just on the phone with Officer Netchemiah and Deacon Malachi, and we're going to counsel about this. But you got it, Officer Alicia. All right. Mm, 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 mm. Esau's the devil. I t can we? Is Esau the devil, y'all? Esau's the damn devil. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. Look at this. Blow it up big so we can all see it. And statewide action. All gatherings of more than 100 people in North Carolina banned by Governor Roy Cooper says. So, that, guess what? That, that, that messes with the Passover. So, what we're going to have to do, as of right now, is every school is going to have to keep their Passover. And that's not something I, w I would love to go there, but, you know, they'll shut us down and maybe arrest all of us. Um, and, but we're going to keep the concert and a fashion show next month, the, the same time of Passover. Because, you know, the scripture said you could keep it the next month. So what we're going to do is have uh, those of us can keep it coming week. Each school do it. But next month, we're going to have the, the concert and the fashion show and whatever, Black Wall Street. We're going to have all of that next month at the hotel, Lord's Well. Lord's well. I'm going to work out the details with Officer Netchemiah and the deacons later, later on this evening. So everybody just stand by. So as of right now, the Passover will be kept each school individually. And uh, next month, we will have the fashion show Passover in Black Wall Street in April, okay? Lord, after the ban is after the ban has lifted. Everybody understand that? All right. So the garments are still coming, so don't worry about that. The garments are still good. All right. So go ahead, Amaziah. White man's the devil. I just got to say it again. White man's a damn devil. I believe we got a video to be played. Officer Lish, you got it? Uh, one second. Yeah. One second, y'all. <sighs> yes, sir. I got you, Bishop. I got you. I'm going to look at you twice. I got you. Uh, one second. Yeah, is that... One second, one second. <sighs> nope. It, look, look, look. You know they're gonna there. in New York. They're doing the churches. They're making sure no church can gather more than a hundred either. So that's gonna affect the New York school. Did he? That's not. You looked at it. Don't mess up over there, Officer Alicia. Is it a music video? Okay, go ahead, play it. I gotta say, the white man's a damn devil. Damn the devil of hell. I was looking forward to meeting everybody. I'm gonna have to do it next month at the concert. No, because if we wait to do the Passover next month, what if they extend it? Then we really messed up. So let's just keep it when the Lord said keep it and then do the concert and all that. We should do uh, the Apollo. Whoever go up and perform bad, we just boo you and pull off the stage. <laughs> that would be some funny stuff. Y'all won't like it, though. Yes, we ready.
Return of the Jeep. God. Yeah. Don't get it twisted, we the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken, and we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. Notice, don't get it twisted, we the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken, and we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. I'm a prophet, lightly melanated, threat because I'm educated, even replicated, still segregated. Give dedication to the dedicated, educate the masses on the actions that's practice against my federation. Say they attack us in factions for the slightest infraction. Then they say, oh, that's the past when they hurl hate. The media, they harass us, showing dissatisfaction at the way we gain attraction on the world stage. What you thought? We was about to struggle through the same thing. Never have the courage or power to ever change things. The spirits that's inside us is fighting to rearrange. Breaking free the mind of the slaves, so I remain king. Don't get it twisted, we the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken. And we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. Notice, don't get it twisted, we the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken. And we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. Notice, check it. But you ain't seen nothing yet The valley of dry bones is coming to reconnect Ain't suffering no stock home, we know how to recollect The memory never faded, retained in our intellect I'm a soldier, better get a god in the flesh Return to the living day, get your pronouns correct Strong, stronger than ever, the watchman here to protect Resurrected the sleeper giants, we cause the effect We cause the nations to sweat, even when they try to deflect They want to see us as henpecked, instead of a threat But the threat is the black man showing love and respect and building families to all his precepts. God, don't get it twisted. We the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken. And we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. Notice, don't get it twisted. We the first ones chosen, and we've been chosen since the first words spoken. And we the purpose of the whole world. Notice, we omnipotent, watch the whole world. All praise to the most high, brothers and sisters. That is Officer Michael, excuse me, Matthew, out of Louisiana. You can pick his album up tonight on Original Royalty. It is available, all right? It is available for pickup on Original Royalty, so pick it up. All right, uh, anything any, anything else, brothers? Yes. The white man's the, the white devil? The white man's the devil. Yes, he is, Bishop. <laughs> yes, he is. Hey, in New Jersey, I just read the article. They said they can't gather more than 250 in Jersey. And New York is 500, so you saw the damn devil. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. All right, Music, Israel, please. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. Most high Christ bless, y'all. Shalom. Wait, wait, we'll get, we'll get our, our announcement.